Welcome to this week's episode of Fuel. I'm Ian Gordon along with Dennis Pitzabarger and Nick Miles. Nick, what's on this week's show? On this week's show, we're going to have two behind the wheels. We're taking a look at the 2007 Range Rover Sport and also at the Saturn View Green Line. And then we'll be in the pits with Ty from Baxter Auto Parts. And it all starts right now. Welcome back to the Fuel Show. Still to come, we're going to have some fuel news. Our second behind the wheel, which this week is going to be the 2007 Saturn View Green Line. And then we'll be in the pits with Ty from Baxter Auto Parts. But now it's time to turn to our first behind the wheel. We're going to take a look at the 2007 Range Rover Sport. Now the Range Rover Sport is built on the same platform as the LR3. It's the second most powerful vehicle in Land Rover's history and was first seen in 2004 as the Stormer Concept. Now it comes in a five-door, where the Stormer only came in a three-door, and it's a big seller for Land Rover. Dennis and Ian take a first look at the 2007 Range Rover Sport. The first category for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged is Q-Factor, it's the Gadget Tech Score, and I like the Harman Kardon stereo, 550 watts, 14 speakers, and the rear DVD entertainment system. And you can't argue with that. If you want loud speakers, this is where you're going to get it. I'm what? Yeah, exactly. I'm surprised you don't wear hearing aids in both ears. I'm going to talk about the tech side of it. Now, it obviously has a very advanced dynamic stability control system, and it does have something that kind of goes hand in hand with Range Rovers, which is the air suspension to level out or rise, rise or lower the ride height. But that really interacts with what is the gem of the technological side of any Range Rover, which is the terrain res response system. What it does is it has a setting that goes with either the dynamic stability, engine management control, ABS brakes that can control the vehicle to really put it in its best stance, if you want to call it, for either driving in the sand, snow, rock crawling, highway, even pulling up to the fancy restaurant to lower the ride height for your wife or girlfriend to get out of the other side. It really is a technological gem, and obviously that's going to bump the score. How are we going to do that, Ian? We're going to give it a four for Q Factor for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged. The next category for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged is curb appeal. That's how the vehicle looks, and this thing looks mean. I like the slats behind the front wheels, the breather slats, and it's got kind of a beefier street look to it. Well, sure, and that's what's always been kind of interesting, and Ian and I have argued about this left and right. The thing about the Range Rovers, and especially the supercharged model, is the fact that it looks so urban. The 20-inch wheels, it, it does have the ride height that you can lower down if you're pulling up to the restaurant, like I mentioned in Q Factor, but it's the thing that it's always been a mystique about the Land Rovers is they look urban, they feel urban, they have a almost an aura of being that uh, kind of uh, gentleman's SUV. Yeah, like too luxury in a way to yeah, be good. but it's interesting how they're so capable. Now we'll talk about that obviously in performance, but something that is so capable off-road, it, it's funny how it looks as if it was meant to be pulling up next to limousines or Rolls Royces. Definitely curb appeal is going to be high, one of the best looking sport utilities ever built. We'll give it a total of 4.25 for curb appeal for the Range Rover Supercharged. Performance is your next category for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged, and it's how the vehicle performs, obviously, but <laughs> this thing is very capable off-road. We've talked about that, but it's also very capable on-road. It's putting up some really amazing numbers. Well, sure, and let's talk about those numbers. Now, from that 4.2-liter supercharged motor, you're talking about 390 horsepower, 410 foot-pounds of torque, but more importantly, the fact that it's pushing around 5,670 pounds. That's 400 pounds more than BMW's X5 4.8 IS, which would be kind of a <laughs> counterpart to this supercharged Range Rover Sport. Now, when it gets down to it, let's talk some more numbers. Zero to 60 in seven seconds, 15 four and a quarter mile. Uh, that was only a couple generations ago that that was Corvette numbers. Now, it's not going to be the next generation Corvette, but what it can do is it can feel like a sports sedan wrapped in an SUV body. That's what the buyer's looking for, and they get it delivered to them right on the head of the nail. It also does the adaptive shift logic, which basically a computer in the system learns how you drive and adjusts all the numbers. Well, to sure. If, you kinda, if you're always giving it the full throttle, it's going to shift very hard. It's going to bring the RPMs up, kind of give you that anvil in the back of your head feeling. And if you're driving about town, just kind of gingerly floating about the uh, downtown area in your fancy SUV, you're going to get it kind of slushing right through the box. So how are we going to score it? We'll give it 4.5 for performance for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged. 
Fin finish is the next category for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged and first class materials, first class luxury. And we talked about it almost feeling like it's too luxurious to be able to be capable, but they do it well, they blend it together. And that's what they do is they blend. And I think that that's interesting you bring that up. It's the way that they've blended kind of that old school feel to some of the gauges. Now, I think that buyers of the Range Rover lineup will see some of the previous Range Rovers back in like the 99 to 2001 range. You'll see a, a definite classic Range Rover feel in the gauges and the materials. And that's not a bad thing because back then they were still, yeah. they would have, I mean, if this show was around in 99, it'd still be a great score. The thing that they've done with this car is they've been able to take some of their new technology like the navigation system, the stereo and DVD systems, blend them into great leathers, woods, metals, all within the interior cabin, and then add in kind of that classic feel to the way the buttons and the fonts are on the gauges or even on, say, the HVAC controls, the heating and air conditioning controls. It's just, I really think that this is a strong point in the vehicle, and the way that they've blended those two worlds together, for me, really bumps the score up. We'll give it 4.25 for fit and finish for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged. Drivability is the final category for the Range Rover Sport Supercharged, and Dennis said it before, it feels like a sports sedan wrapped in an SUV body. It does get low gas mileage around the city, 13, and on the highway, 19. It does have 7,700 pounds towing capacity, which is pretty amazing, and you fold down the back seats, 71 cubic feet of cargo room if you need to, you know, pull a bunch of linens back from Bed Bath & Beyond or something. Yeah, and I think that might bring up the only downside I bring up to it. You're talking about 390 horsepower, the active terrain system, the looks inside are classic, the looks outside are modern. It can go just about anywhere you want off-road, and it's an on-road tear. The only downside I would have to say in overall drivability is the back seat's a little cramped. Maybe with somebody my size, I am 6'2", I have to put the seat back a little farther than most. That might be the only Achilles heel in drivability for this car. Besides that, and the mileage not being too good, and quite frankly, I don't think people that are buying 70,000 SUVs really care. It's very strong, but it does have a couple weak points. That's why we'll give it a four for drivability for the Range Rover Sport Supercharger. Let's see how Dennis and Ian scored the 2007 Range Rover Sport. In Q Factor, the tech or gadget score, they gave it a 4.0. In curb appeal, a 4.25. In performance, it was a 4.5. And fit and finish, a 4.25. Finally, in drivability, the overall usefulness of a vehicle, it was a 4.0. The total score for the 2007 Range Rover Sport was 21 out of a possible 25. Still to come on fuel, our second behind the wheel, the 2007 Saturn View Green Line, will be in the pits with Ty from Baxter Auto Parts. And when fuel returns, we'll have fuel news.